Hello fellow programmers, my name is Pavel and I am here with uh, another C-Sharp exercise from the book C-Sharp How to Program, chapter 10, uh, exercise 11 and we'll be making a game, tic-tac-toe. Uh, I think we all know tic-tac-toe rules so that's going to be easy to follow, you know, the logic of who wins and who loses and, or if it's a draw. But, okay, so we are going to create a uh, a game of tic-tac-toe uh, we will create a class that contains a private three by three rectangular array of integers in other words it will be a two-dimensional array we will have a rows and we will have a columns and the constructor should initialize the empty board to all zeros yeah i mean we start the game they will be all zeros and uh then based on uh, you know whatever symbol the players will have, the zeros will be replaced. Allow two human players, wherever the first player moves, place a 1 in the specified square and place a 2 wherever the second player moves. And each move must be to an empty square. In other words, if it's already taken, if someone already used it, obviously you, you cannot just override it. You simply have to tell the user that he has to pick a different square to position its uh, symbol in. After each move, determine whether the game has been won and whether it's a draw. So we will have a game loop and after each iteration of the loop, after each move, we will determine if this was the last move, if there is a winner or if it's a draw. If not, then we will keep uh, playing the game. And they say that if you feel ambitious, modify your app so that the computer makes the moves for one of the players. And I feel a little ambitious, so yeah, we can do that. And also allow the player to specify whether he or she wants to go first or second. Now, if you feel exceptionally ambitious, develop an app that will play three-dimensional tic-tac-toe on a 4x4 board. And no, I do not feel that exceptionally ambitious today, so we will just do a regular tic-tac-toe. All right, so um, let's st get started. First, let me create a class. And it's going to be called, how about tic-tac-toe? Okay, so we have our class, and in it, we will need uh, to initialize the board, you know, uh, and uh, I will do that. I will do the board as a as a static because it will keep changing. It has to be available for both players because we, they play on the same board, so it has to be static. And w whatever change one player makes has to be available or visible for the other player. So it's gonna be static. It's going to be of integers because it will accept zero as an initial value and then one or two depending on uh, what player uh, what player moves and uh, I am going to place that and not here of course but inside a class my bad so this is gonna be static and it's going to be integer and it's going to be two dimensional array and I'll just call it board so now we have the like I said we'll have a rows like uh, uh, we'll have a horizontal and vertical lines and um, another thing that I will need is a name for the player just uh, just to ask the for the name I don't think so uh, I make it available again for the whole class but of course it's uh, private by default so uh, our constructor for the class tic tac toe will accept and I'm going to make it, uh, it's going to accept two things. It's going to accept the player's name, but it will also accept uh, for internal use, just for the class and for doing the looping and the calculations and all that. It will accept an integer, one or two. F one for player one, two for player two, because it's simply easier to you know, deal with the integers than you know, with the player's name, for the, again, for the internal use of the class. So... Uh, it will accept the integer player and it will accept the string of the player name and uh, 
inside it will initialize a few things it will initialize the board uh, but before that we do that I'm going to do a property public integer player and it will be automatic property so it will simply get and set and that's going to be our player so our player will equal player we don't have to verify this because we will be adding this value ourselves within the program it's not something that the user inputs this is assigned automatically so we got the player and we got the board which is the you know the two-dimensional array and that we will initialize it to three by three so it's going to be a new array of integers with three by three all right and um, I will do another property I will do the player name property so I will do public uh, string player name and this one will get uh, of course it will return the player name so it will return and I'll do the this keyword so it's uh, clear that we are talking about this variable not this but this one so it will return player name Uh, another way to do it would be simply name this one with like let's say underscore and that way you don't have to do this but you could use the underscore doesn't matter one way or another is fine and um, it will set the player name but we will verify it we will make sure that the user actually enters the name in other words doesn't just click enter and leaves it empty the name has to be entered so if the value that the user enters the length of it uh, is le uh, is greater than zero in other words if user actually entered something then uh, player name equals value we have a correct name I mean we're not very fine if it's actually the player's name but you know player entered something he entered a string and so we assign that to the player's name Otherwise, if the length is uh, empty, if it's less than, if it's zero or less, well, not less, but if it's zero, okay, then uh, we will loop until the user enters correct name. So we will do a while loop, and we will be looping while the value uh, length is less uh, than one. In other words, if it's zero, basically. So I'll comment it as name cannot be an empty string. So we will loop until it is not an empty string. And to do that, we will, like I said, we will use a while loop. As long as it's less than one, we will simply output the console.writeLine line uh, invalid entry. Please re enter players name and we will get the name into the value again and which is going to be simple it's a string so no conversion is needed console dot read line and if this is wrong if the user uh, doesn't enter anything again it comes back of course to the while loop it checks the condition yeah it's still less than one it's still uh, empty string so it you know uh, um, outputs uh, invalid en entry uh, please re-enter the name and it will be looping as long as uh, the user keeps entering wrong name once it is correct it comes to while loop of course and this is false so this is not executed anymore and it comes uh, and it will assign the player's name in other words we will not move forward with the program until the player's name is correctly assigned so that is our player's name so I go to my uh, to my uh, constructor and I'll do player name equal player name whatever the user supplied 
So I like to do it with properties, but, but of course this is capital player name, it's a property. Our property equals to whatever the user supplies as long as uh, you know the, the the value is correct. Okay, so we have that. And now I can go and actually start the game. Now the first thing we need to do is to initialize the board. So I'll come over here, I'll do public, and it's going to be static again because it is uh, performed for both players. Uh, if there's only one board, so we, we can do it static. And we will simply do uh, a nested loop for integer r. I use r as a row, so we know that's the horizontal lines. And I will use c for columns, which is obviously the vertical lines, vertical lines uh, of the board. So for r equals 0, r is less than 3, and r plus plus. And the inside loop is 4 integer c equals 0, c is less than 3, and c plus, oops, c plus plus, plus plus. And we all we do is uh, initialize it to 0, so our board with the uh, index of r and c, in other words, we start from 0, 0, then it's going to be, uh, it, it will populate all the whole row, then it goes to the next one and so forth. So it will start 0, 0, then 0, 1, and then 0, 2, then it will move over here again to the outside loop r will be 1, so now it will be 1, 0, 1, 2, 1, 3, and so forth, until the whole board is populated with 0. So that's our initial board. And uh, we can now, uh, yeah, at the end, we can actually display it. Why not? We can do display board, which I will make, obviously, uh, a function because display board will be used not just for uh, uh, initializing the board but every time a move is made by any of the players a new board will be rendered and displayed and this is where the method will be uh, or the function or the functionality will be coded to display in the board okay so uh, our function display board is going to be this one will, I'll make it private because it's not going to be accessed from outside this is just for the for the class but I'll make it static because now I'm accepting a, you know static input uh, so I need to make this method static as well uh, so it's going to be called display board no uh, no parameters and Inside, it's going to be very similar. Uh, it simply will, but it, we will do another integer r equals zero. R is uh, less than three, and r plus plus, of course. And uh, inside, we'll do the inside loop for integer c equals zero. C is less than three. Again, it's because the board is 3 by 3, and C++. However, over here, what we are going to do, we are going to uh, write whatever the board is, uh, whatever the, the array holds, all the elements in the array. So, console.write, not a right line, because we are writing one after another, and then we will move. Uh, to the next line. In other words, we need three inputs or three elements to print in one line, then we move to the next one, and then we move to the last one. So, write, and we will write the board, the element of R and C. So again, we just loop through all of them, and we are outputting them. And what I'm going to do, after each is uh, printed on the, or displayed on the board, I'll add a space to it, just so they are not cramped together. It's just for the visual. 
So over here with this one, we output a, a line. Basically, at the beginning, when we call it from the initial board, it will output 0, 0, 0. Now we have to move to the next line. So over here, I will do console dot uh, right line. So now it moves to the next line. It comes over here, and it will simply output uh, another zero, 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 right? So, uh, and then we go to the thread one, and it will output the thread zero, zero, zero at the beginning. And after after we start playing, obviously these zeros will be changed to whatever player one or two uh, using as a, as their symbols, which is uh, number one or two uh, in our case. So uh, we have that, and uh, so I'll delete that. It's obvious uh, that we over here we print three zeros. Then we move to the next line over here. Come back to our uh, outer loop. I'll put another row of three zeros. Next line. Come over here for the last time. I'll put the last row of uh, three zeros. And uh, once we are finished, I'll output another just uh, console that right line just to make. An empty line. This one doesn't really have any functionality. This is just so uh, after each uh, after each uh, you know uh, play, we we move one line down just to you know make it more visible or a little neater and organized. Okay, so now we have that, and uh, now we can start doing the you know the game itself.